So welcome back to the Installer Plaza. Now I'm joined by this gentleman next to me. His motto is innovate or die. Uh, this is Jan Kriekels. He's from Yaga. He's a creative economist uh, with an anthropological background. I, I feel very um, insignificant sitting next to you, Jan. I've got to be honest. I mean, I'm just a human being, yeah. but they're quite important human I beings. I don't know what I am, but it looks like I'm also a human <laughs> being. <laughs> uh, you, you're well-traveled, and, and, and you, you've got these values um, about respect nature, awaken the artist, dream a future, create emotion, build bridges. Very much, that's very, it's how you so live, isn't it? This is how I live, and the values actually come from not the three my wise men which come from the East, it's about five wise men. Okay. And, and all values represent an archetype. You probably also yes. have an archetype. Yep. Yep. Are you the respect nature man? Yep. Or, you, or yeah, are yeah, you yeah, the yeah. creative no. man? Yeah, yeah. Or are you the, the visionary man? We are all man? archetypes. Yeah, you have some certain yeah. archetype which where you are stronger in. Yeah. Or maybe the social guy, the bringing the messages, or the spiritual guy. It's like a regroupment of the archetypes for the new age coming. Now, I saw one of your podcast yeah. interviews recently, and you said that Yaga started more than 200,000 years ago. You don't look that old, I've got to be honest. I think we lived forever. <laughs> yeah. so, so explain what you mean by that. It means that uh, ev this nice and close. E everything started with the invention of the fire. Fire. You know, Prometheus stole the fire from the gods, and they sent us Pandora, and she opened the box, which made the world different. The only thing we have to do is bring that fire back to the gods, and the Pandora box will close. Wow. <laughs> well, I'd love to be in one of your board meetings. They must be <laughs> great fun. Um, <laughs> Now, Yaga, I looked up, is a Malay word, okay? yes. which means take care, or yes. it's a guard or a sentry. Is that what it means in That's your... That's what it means. If you're back in nature without a fire, you probably won't make it. So heating is taking care of you. It's taking all the bad things around you, like humidity, bacteriological things, viruses away. And in this bubble of comfort, we can survive. But in your case, Yaga is the coming together of two names, I think I'm right in saying. It's Jan and Gasto. Uh, it's where two installers. I'm, one, I'm a son of Jan. I'm also Jan. And I was actually uh, taking care of the production of radiators when I was between, already at five. So it's human labor which made me... <laughs> Child labor. <laughs> Child labor. Child labor. But this was your dad. Your, your father yes. was an installer. Yeah. He was an installer, yes. And, and did he have a vision about the future then when he was doing it? No, it was, they were really do people. They mean they had a lot to do and they were filled, filled days that they had to bring uh, radiators in the homes because before they were shark call in the homes and it was a dusty thing. Yeah. And so they invented actually central heating. You have one boiler in the room and you have pipes and we put the radiators on. And we as a child had to make these radiators. Wow. <laughs> so were you, were you the sort of child who sort of in the chemistry lessons were making things that explode as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, this actually was the, 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 the bottom of my life because I always had to work. Right. So I invented something not to work. Is <laughs> <laughs> going to visit cultures in the world. So I probably visited 100 countries to find out how people defend themselves in survival. And this is all mixed in one book. We got it. This is available. Is it on Amazon? Yes. And Innovate it, or die. And, and it I, means I, I, cultures like humanity on Earth are only sustainable when we res respect these values. And it says here on the back. For example, the respect nature one is not respected. It will kill us if we don't respect nature. Yeah, and I, I think that's a really important point. Yeah. You disrespect it and you abuse it, it's going to get you Like back. we did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So let, let's get on to that. How big a threat is climate change to humans as a species, you know, as, as a human race? How big a threat? Read the book. I know, I know. Innovate or die. Okay. We won't make it when we don't respect it. So what do you mean by innovate or die? Just innovate or die means that we have to radically change our values how we look to life and to other species and to our environment. And if we don't adapt our brain to this, if we keep on going the same way, 
there's a there's a threshold we go over and things will dramatically change and there will be no place for us anymore. So when you're talking about this, and I, I get you get a lot of followers and people who are interested in what you're saying, do you find there's a generational thing here where acceptance comes in for people? You know, older people who think, do you know what, I haven't got long left, so I don't really care. You know, I think, or is it, is it different to that? I think everybody unconsciously knows that the things we do, we cannot get away with in your unconsciousness. But we hide it like, see, like people on the scene. It's all right if I do it as long as nobody else uh, does Nobody it. looks to it. Eh? It's, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something in the brain we don't want to see. But the younger generation, of course, they come in in a materialized world, they have other ideals, and they probably have this consciousness more on their lips. Eh? And, and they have all the problems we had with the pollution, we pushed to the next generation. Yeah. So they're going to have all the pollution yeah. we created in 200 years of industrialization eh? and agricultural industrialization. Eh? And so they are actually, with all this pollution, so they have to act in the future to actually survive in this uh, poubelle. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oui, c'est la poubelle, vraiment. But do you see your role in, in life, if you like, to educate? Is that My you role in it? life is to make people consciousness. I have a track for this, I, and I did presentations for five to up to 5,000 people about innovate or die to wake up that consciousness. So I see this is my role because I went to Burning Man also where the fire is, yeah. is actually the actor yeah. and I created there a big piece of art and we burned it just to talk with the people about the fire. It's the fire we have to stop. At this moment, we bring fire into the world at a capacity of four atomic bombs a second. This will change the atmosphere dramatically. And if we don't believe it, uh, it's, uh, the scientist like Attenberg says there's only one number we have to look, that's the carbon dioxide. So everything we make, all our industrialization has to work without the fire. And from the fire we make electricity, from the fire the machine goes, uh, we use fire to fly, we use everything as burning energy, fossils, life forms. Yeah. Yeah. Us, we, we burn ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's a very strange situation, we are as humanity, and we already took 90% of everything, of the sea, of the land, of the domestic, everything. So we are far away over the edge, out of the shallow. <laughs> when, when uh, I wish we could do this all day because I'm yeah. fascinated by this, but we've got about another five, ten minutes or so. But, yeah. but, but and <coughs> I'd like to move to the subject of decarbonizing heat. Yeah. How big a challenge is it's it? It's easy. All the heat pump manufacturers are there. Heat pump is unbeatable. Even hydrogen cannot beat heat pumps. For the homes, we need low temperatures. Heat pumps are super products. For industrial processes where you need higher temperatures, hydrogen is possible. See, so big industry will need hydrogen and the homes will need heat pumps. So how can industries and, uh, and countries work together to implement energy saving techniques and so on, you know, and technologies? It's and taxing the pollution. Taxing pollution. So, for example... CO2 tax. Okay. Or, or water tax. Every ingredient which is polluting... i tell you something. All these big 100 companies in the world which created this industrialization with this energy, this fossil energy, they made a lot of money. If they would use this money they made and give it back to the people to clean the world, we would have no problem. But what barriers are being put up to prevent this happening? Because there are barriers. Aren't the there? human brain. Seriously? Yeah. In, we have in, a problem. In what respect? Because we're all borderlines. Huh? Humanity is one borderline species, if you compare us with all the other animals. They don't use tools to manipulate everything. Eh? As, uh, for example, you have seen a monkey with a PC? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, can you imagine that all the animals use technology? We don't have any chance. Eh? It's only us. We are communists in the natural world. Eh? So we have to think back our position in the world and take only as much as is necessary. And that's the Indian way. In the agriculture, but we shot them. <laughs> 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 we all shot them. <laughs> because I've visited all these tribes. Eh? <laughs> no, no, I know. I know. You have. You they have a good... Have. Also, the Taoism might save us. 
If you look to the Taoism of Japan, the minimalistic life form, yep. the samurai, the yep. dedicated yeah, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. they live like butterflies. They only take what they need. And that's maybe the thing that might change in, in, in humans. Uh, okay, I, I'm not going to talk about um, the, the Japanese monks or anything here. I'm going to talk yeah. about installers instead. They're not Some of the, the installers are our samurai. Eh? I know, no, no. Well, they are, actually. <laughs> they are. But how important are they to, in the race to net zero? They what are role the, do they have? They are the most important in, in the race, actually. If they, if they advise the right thing, they don't think commercial or mercantile, and they sell the ideological thing, we could have a rapid change. So, uh, as a manufacturer, they're your greatest sales force, aren't they? They are the, they are the sales force. The but beside the engineers, of course, yeah, yeah. which are more specified, and also may, maybe the architect is also very important. Eh? Mm. Well, <laughs> Here's a big question. What would you like to see the government, the governments? It's, it's very easy. Do? Let's say that in Europe we have 100 million homes. Uh, 200 million homes. Well, hang on, we're not in Europe anymore. Just to, just to emphasize that. I'm, no. I'm, I'm disconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, in, let's say Europe yeah, and UK, yeah. we have, let's say, 200 million yep, homes. Yep. Let's say half of it we can do anything about. About this 100 million homes, we have to change in 30 years. Get them off the fossil grid. Get the gas boilers out, the oil boilers out, the electricity made of oil. So it means 3% of this mass we have to do every year. So it's 3 million homes we have to get off the grid. This is the biggest business after the war. It's a massive challenge. There's not enough material. Yeah. So to live in a home in the future with such an amount of room is impossible. So we have to make cocons in the room, I think, where alternative energy will be applied for the heating and for the cooling because it's going to be very hot in the future. And we're going to need 60% more energy to cool the world. So you need what we make, radiators, who can cool. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Which is lucky you make them. We won't, make go, them. we won't go into a commercial for this, though. But no, but they all have them. I want them that all make them. Yeah, 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 Everybody yeah. has to make them. But is there a commercial aspect to this as well in terms of the, the, the profit you need today versus the investment for the future, so to speak? I think that we have to make everything so easy that people can do themselves because there will not be enough people to do the transition. Ah, okay. So everything has to be self-done. Self we have to make lessons for the kids how to grow food again for the agricultural revolution, yeah. and we have to give lessons how they can change their homes themselves, the people. It's because the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. No, I mean, the, they're the, they're, it's for the, I mean, the yeah. older can help. I get it. We, we I get can, it. We I can get help it. them, of course, but the kids are mainly the guys who are going to change it. And so this do-it-self society, which is very creative, is what I call the creative economy, where everybody can still make everything for himself without a specialist. Oh. How much representation do you make to governments? Um, I think the governments have to liberalize this market and say these are the correct solutions and we go for it. Today we make a massive diffusion of solutions. Nobody knows what to do. Huh? It takes before if you have a home you want to change it you go to an installer one says this you go to another merchant he says this so you have 25 solutions for the same problem it's 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 not the right solution there's only one solution eh? yeah no it's gas no oil it's a bit like when you're ill you look at dr google you're going to get so many different views as to insane. what's right and what's yeah. wrong yeah. I, now look you, you we were talking beforehand you were saying that you most rock stars have got your products in their houses. But That's true. We're talking about <laughs> Putin has got products of this, yours. I mean, we, we, we've done the highest towers in, uh, in Russia. We did the biggest uh, airports in the world in Beijing. We, did, we do Facebook. We do uh, Google. We have all the rock stars in technology and in music and in art. I mean, we could convince them. And now this technology has to come to everybody. And that's what we are trying to accelerate. So President Putin doing a, <laughs> doing a checking on his, on his equipment from time to time. That must present a challenge. We've probably done, done maybe 1,000 buildings in, in Russia. Wow. Uh -uh. I mean, these people are the same as ever. Well, Don't believe the press. Eh? Yeah, 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 I mean, they're just like you and me. Yeah, yeah. They're European. Eh? 
Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> well, look, how long are you here? Are you here for the whole day today? I'm here today and tomorrow morning. So you're going to be at your stand and yeah. you're going to be meeting. I, look, I'd love to go on for I'm going to meet all the heat pump manufacturers here. Well, are you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, why not? And I'd love to come over and carry this conversation. Like, yeah, and it's been a, a genuine privilege to meet you. But, People uh, should nice go out from and you. get this book. Yeah. It uh, doesn't say what the price is. It's probably, who cares? It's worth getting anyway. And um, go and meet this man. A, a fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Please give it up for Jan Creek. It's just a great guy. Hello. Jan, thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, in about seven or eight minutes' time, we're going to have our next great, great debate, how to hit heat pump targets. Uh, so come and join us for that. I've got some industry experts going to be talking about, uh, talking about that. And, uh, wow, I'm just blown away by that. Thank you very much, Jan.